Hey guys, so we are in Denmark. I was flying from Norway to Italy and um, I made it so that I had about eight hour layover here in, in uh, Copenhagen. And I thought, well, hey, we have an extra time. Why don't we hop out of the uh, airport and go exploring a little bit? Because everything is quite accessible through trains. So I'm um, sorry if I sound um, off. I'm running on like one hour of sleep because the uh, plane was a really early plane. We got here at 7 a.m. And um, but anyway, we're going to go and see one of the most exciting one of the most renowned castles in all of Denmark, which is called Fredericksborg. It is a, a Renaissance um, period castle that was built uh, for Danish King's leisure. So this was his kind of like party house. He would come here and hunt and relax and Get, have some guests over so uh, it was a beautiful beautiful um, ca castle unfortunately there was a huge fire in the, in the middle of so the castle was built in 17th century and then there was a huge fire in the 19th century but some rooms survived and everything else was restored basically to its original form um, it's a magnificent place I saw pictures and I always wanted to visit so we are here in Holrod and uh, yeah, just a short bus ride and we'll, we'll check out the, um, we'll check out the castle and here we are in the middle of Denmark. Here we are, Fredericksborg, just walking in, but look at that, ah, unfortunately there's some reconstruction going on, so you can't see it in all of the beauty, but here we are crossing a little bridge. Here's some kind of mound, water mound. But look at these walls. How much history do they remember? <clears throat> all right, so let's go. Let's go into the main court. To see there's some construction here, so sorry for the noise, but look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, this is neat. Oh, this is so cool. Wow. Look at this. Look at that. Wow. So here we are in the main court of the Fredericksborg. And the fountain behind me is um, sort of a, a centerpiece, a masterpiece that represented the, the Danish king emperor himself. So the, the god you see there is a Poseidon and that symbolized the king at the time. You know, he was a sort of equated to a godly figure and um, unfortunately this is not the original so the original was actually taken I think to Sweden after one of the wars that uh, Danish Empire had with Sweden and as a reparation I think Sweden took the took the fountain so this is a replica but a pretty good replica and look just how amazing that looks wow look at this magnificent magnificent castle You know, when you stand here, you can sort of feel the, the epicness, the epicness of this building. You know, this was supposed to impress not just the king, but all the, all the guests that he had from overseas that he would, you know, um, entertain here. So as you walk up here, you just, you feel that royalty, you know, you feel power, luxury. You know, there's symbolism of days of old. Here's Roman statues and and uh, you know t tales from mythology and and you have um, 
you know, the, the royal regalias and it's just so neat and the design is so, so, um, so native to Danish Empire. You know, this is a Danish Renaissance style of building with the red brick showing. So it's quite a, quite an amazing building to look at. Look at that. Wherever you look, there's some, some magnificent detail hiding. Look at these statues and the beautiful water. Wow, okay, okay, let's go in. Let's go in and see what we can find. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> wow. Wow, I am amazed. I'm completely mesmerized by with this castle, it, it is, you know, an interesting thing about Frederiksborg is that this was the first castle that was built inland. So because because Denmark is surrounded by, by, by water, usually the castles were built strategically um, by the water so they could defend the cities and would be easy to get to by the ship. But here, uh, this was the first example when um, when a castle was built far inland, and this was primarily due to a, to just you know a whim of a king, at the time he wanted to have it here. The areas around here are very good for hunting, so um, you know I guess that's where he wanted to have his uh, big big house, big villa, big party house. Um, see, there you are. This is so neat. Oh, I can't wait to go inside. Oh, and look at this. So as you walk, by the way, you know this, we're standing here in the sort of inner court. Um, so you can just imagine, you know, the, uh, um, the horse was carriages of queens and, and kings and emperors of other nations coming up here and stopping by these magnificent doors. And, you know, there would be a, a numerous staff greeting them and music playing so you can just imagine the the grandiose of what what it looked like in its heyday but look at this as you walk up to see this beautiful wall of um, sculptures and, and carvings and look at that that is so neat that is so cool and we're not even in yet. Let's go. Let's go check out what what mysteries hide inside. Okay, here we are. Look oh. at wow! Look at that. So here are the portraits of all the different rulers of these lands throughout the days. Wow! Look at that. This is, of course, something that they would wear. Can you, can you, I hope you can see just the, the complexity of these dresses and as far as I understand, these are real. Wow, look at that. That is so beautiful. Wow, magnificent. You know, it's one thing to see them in painting online, but when you see it in real life, just makes all the difference. Wow. <laughs> These are some pretty serious looking faces. Nice. And this is what it looked like, you know, all the way back in 1690. Look at that. Not much changed really. I mean, the city grew around it, but the building itself sort of stayed the same. All right, let's go. Oh, there you go. A little example of a royal court. Wow. 
Look at this, this is pretty atmospheric, you know, as you look at these ancient paintings from the 17th century, you can hear the thematic music of what, you know, you would hear at the court here, at the king's court. You know, here's the paintings from the dignitaries and, and kings and King's daughter. Wow. So this is King Christian the Fourth. He was largely uh, well, he's credited for, you know, starting this project of the uh, building this castle. So here's, of course, he's laying at rest after passing away. In the, in the, sen in the middle of 17th century. Look at these faces. It's, uh, it's fascinating. These portraits are really lifelike, you know. It's quite interesting. And here we have the painting of, again, Christian IV. During his life, you can see the wrathful gaze in this one. He was a big boy. Look at that. Very interesting paintings. And as I showed you, that is, a, that is a painting of when he passed away. You know, as you, as you keep walking here, it's just room after room with these portraits of nobility. It's so neat. These ones are obviously a little less significant, but we just saw the king's portraits and that was impressive. Who are these? Let's see. Head of royal accounts. So these would be various bureaucrats, you know, that king would have close to him. And this, let's see, what is this? model of Copenhagen castle. So I'm not sure if we'll have the time to see it, but here's a nice view of what it what it looked like. And here in this hall we have a series of paintings sort of glorifying the Norwegian Danish <coughs> Viking um, supremacy over the Isles of England. So look at these beautiful scenes from the battles. You can see the uh, Vikings are taking away the plunder that they took from the English. Wow, look at that. See, each one has a episode of history associated with itself. And they're beautifully done. You know, the faces look very interesting. There's so much detail and emotion in all of them. Look at that. So these obviously would tell stories of, of the battles. This is really neat. Oh man, I wish I could have a little bit more time to spend here, you know. I'm just trying to run through this castle and, and the museum within it, but I think one can get lost here for hours. Just reading more about these battles and their significance. Just beautiful, wow. Look at that, see, London Tower. Wow, the 
This is a long, long story. Hmm. Very interesting. And here's the other side of the room, as you can see, both are filled with these paintings on the side of the wall. And, you know, I don't know Danish, so it's a little bit hard for me to interpret what these are saying. But, you know, if you do know Danish, this would be very interesting. Oh, and here's quite a different style. Look at that. Simpler. Wow, look at that. Appears to be Old English. Keeps on going and go. Keeps on going and going. Man, I'd really like to know more about this. If only I had a little bit more time. But I sort of wanted to record the whole thing just so you can see the the scale of artifacts that you can find here. Look at this, this is truly a castle. So here's, here's a little door I found. And here, as you walk in, you can see all these different, what I suppose are royal, royal um, insignias. Look how many different ones there are. So perhaps, perhaps these belong to different knights. Wow, look, look how much history there is here. <laughs> oh my God. And they just keep on going and going. Wow, look. Look there. These ancient, beautiful. Wow. <laughs> oh my, okay. So it looks like they're gonna go all the way to the top. Neat. Here I found a little room dedicated to Hans Christian Andersen. He's a creator of many children's stories that are world-renowned, so this is a little room dedicated to him. Check this out. Check this out. So how we, as we walk into this one, look at the view that we can. These are beautiful paintings. So lifelike. Okay, let's look, let's keep exploring this place. Wow. Each room is like a little treasure hunt. You never know what you're gonna find, but look. So we're sort of exploring together for the first time. This magnificent castle. You know, looking at its historical figures. You know, there we are. Look at these distinguished Danish guys looking at us. 
and I wish I had that some time more to learn more about them. Wow, these paintings are beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, when you when you stand here, the paintings are so lifelike that it really looks like it's real people looking at you, you know, and they're placed everywhere, these portraits. So it just makes it feel like you're in the presence of these historical figures. It's quite a unique experience. Oh, and this is, of course, the, the military commanders, I would assume. Wow. Scenes of century-old battles and... Here we have an example of life in the trenches and soldier has died and his, his comrades are mourning his passing. You know, these scenes never really change in any different war, but it's very unique. Take a look how people dressed and, you know, for example, here, you know, you see these cannons in the museums, but here they are being operated. Wow, look at this painting. This one is so nice. So it looks like this is a battle with, with what appears to be Germany. And see, it says here, the brigades. So, we, you know, you can look it up and find out exactly what battle this is portraying. This one is sort of hard to, hard to see, but yeah, look at these folks. Pretty, pretty badass. Oh, and wow, look at the sword. These are beautiful, and these appear to be from the 19th, 18th century. They're quite old paintings. Wow, oh my god, look at this. Whoa. <laughs> These are grand. Wow. So, big generals, of course, portrayed. This is General Lieutenant Bulov, General Olaf Ray. Again, from mid, mid 19th century. So, these guys would have, of course, fought in the Napoleonic Wars. You know, maybe that's where they got their start as the young soldiers. And here's a, what appears to be a soldier returning from war and being greeted by his family. Look how cool that is. Yeah, wow. Bunch of stuff here. You know, if you like art, you will love this because I've been to quite a few museums and I've never seen so many quality artworks of uh, one area clustered like this together. This is fantastic. Look at that. And they're huge. These paintings are really, really big. Wow. Here we are in another room and look, look at the scale of these paintings. Just huge. This is the whole Gigantic wall filled out by one painting. So you can imagine the people in the background. Obviously at their time they would be recognized, you know. Not just the main faces here, but all the people in the background I'm sure were somebody very notable. And, you know, I really like this room because look at these. Look at these windows. You can sort of walk up to it and and look from outside through perhaps through the same glass that kings of kings of Denmark would gaze upon their castle a few hundred years ago. Okay, I think and look at this. When you look up you can see all these 
beautiful artworks, you know, carvings of wood with gold on them and, and frescoes and wow, just fantastic. We have ascended to another level. Man, these things just don't stop. Now this seems to be, hmm, I wonder who these people are. Oh, there's Hans Christian Andersen. So perhaps these other figures are perhaps writers or painters of their time. You know, I wonder what, what it would be like to perhaps spend a night in a castle like this. You know, it'd be so interesting to see these paintings in different times of the day. Because, you know, they, they really look alive. It would be, I suspect, a little uneasy to walk around. It really looks like wherever you stand, they're sort of looking at you. I believe that might be composer. Nope. Nope. Must be a politician. Or some other official. Wow. Look at that. This is a magnificent collection. Look at this, wow. King Christian the, the seventh. So this is a beginning of 19th century. Wow. Well, look at this one. This is really interesting. So as you walk by, <laughs> it changes from, from one image to another. so much to see. Frederick the Fifth. Oh, this is neat, look at this. Oh my goodness, so much art. As you can see, some of these paintings look pale. That's not because it was intended to be so some of the paint that they used, you know, the painters at the time didn't know, but it would, it would and later become bleak. It was not quality paint. Sometimes they did it to save money. Sometimes they just didn't know. So some, some of these paintings from, you know, like 17th century can sometimes look overly pale and that's why. Look at this hairdo. Should try that. Based. Wow. Beautiful. 
beautiful furniture too. Imagine waking up in that. That'd feel, that'd feel pretty good. Wow, and oh, and look at that. I don't know if we'll have the time to make it all the way up there, but from here, you can get a really good view on the, on the gardens, the royal gardens. Let me just get the focus right. Yeah, you know, like I said, we don't have much time, so I'm just just going around this place and really just exploring with you. So if I don't say something, I'm sorry. You know, I'm not a professional at this, but but it would be. But I just want to give you a glimpse of what a what a walk here would look like for somebody that came here for the first time. himself overlooking these tables so perhaps this would be where they would feast or meet wow. let's walk in there let's see what's here oh Celestial Globe, made in 1654 for Duke Frederick III. Wow. Oh, look. Ah, so you see the signs of the Zodiac. Inside there is a, there's an engine. Let me just get a closer look for you here. Look at the complexity of this thing. Wow. So I'd assume it moves with accordance to the uh, to the astronomical laws. Wow. Really cool. This is a nice painting. And these ones too. I like these war ones. You know, there's so much action packed into them. You know, you can sort of look at them for hours and 
You'll see some little detail every time. Wow. Oh my. This was grandiose too. This one is really cool too. Ship getting stuck in the northern waters. Here's of course the Crown Princess Mary that will be the Queen of Denmark one day. <clears throat> you know, I'm just walking back in this hole and again, you know, like literally each room. Your eyes cannot focus on any specific object because everything is so interesting, you know. You know, each of these paintings is uh, somebody very significant and distinguished and it would just be a treat to have a chance to learn more about it. Oh, I think this one is very famous. Let's look at this one. Ah, the light. The light is not the best here. Too much. <coughs> Let's see if this maybe be a little bit better. Okay, there you go. Look at this. Look at this battle scene. These guys are going forward. There's guns blazing, cannons shooting. Very, very beautifully done painting. So cool. It's time for us to go one floor higher. As you can see, these, these crescents just keep going. Never stop. Wow. Okay, I think we have reached the end as far as we can go. So we won't go up there. But there's one more room here. So let's see what happens here. Oh. Oh, this is more modern stuff. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Here's a crown prince, a painting of a crown prince from what year is this? 2018. So this is a contemporary art. Hmm. So these are famous Dan Danish people from today. And this is interesting, you know. I like how they do this. You know, this shows that history is is uh, it's a continu continuous process. You know, this castle is evolving with, uh, with this ro royal dynasty, with the monarchy here in, in... Denmark. It's 
beautifully intertwined with the with the old history and the new history. I'm sure these are probably painting by some quite renowned painter. So yeah, look at that. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. So these are end of 19, beginning of 20th century paintings for most of it in this room. So much to see. Here we are in 1930s, 1940s paintings. You can see how the style is rapidly changing. Much more cubicle, much less romantic, would you say, shall I say? Ooh, oh, this is interesting, look at this. What is this? So this is probably Danish soldiers shooting at Germans. Because it says here, right here, Danske Soldater, 1940. So perhaps this is the resistance, the Danish resistance to the Nazis. Have some beautiful sculptures as well. Wow. You know, this place is fantastic if you like portraits. So many portraits. Wow, quite a collection. Quite a collection. Okay, let's see what we have here. Oh, <laughs> wow, the style has changed. Look at this, every two years you have sort of a shift and art, look at these. Much more realistic. Very cubicle lines. Huh, what is this? Let's see. Fortunately, I cannot read Danish, so I cannot tell you what it is. Forty-five to nineteen sixty. Somebody standing. Okay. Wow. This is quite a unique experience. You know, going through these halls, you can really get a sense of just how much the art changed and how rapidly. Look at this 1972 to 80. You know, this sort of almost looks like a photo from a newspaper. You know, I guess as a photography became a 
a new way of presenting a reality. You know, the painters have adjusted to that. Ooh, this is interesting. Look at this. This is quite a <laughs> quite a different theme that than from where we started on the bottom floors. This is this is quite different. You know, art, art, so hard to so hard to describe it sometimes. So you can see some art here, and then you can look at some of the real photos, some of the famous pieces from great photographers here in Denmark, and just to look at life, just see how see how Denmark was a hundred or so years ago. See other interesting photos. You know, it's so interesting sometimes to see, especially these easygoing photos. Like, look, you know, it's just like some buddies having a beer, enjoying having a smoke, chatting, laughing. You know, somebody has this emotion, somebody's thinking about something. You know, you think about history and as a something that happened, something solid. But, you know, it's, it's just like what it is today. So, quite neat. Quite neat. Hmm? All right, well, there you go. A little walk tour, I guess, through uh, Fredericksburg. You know, like I said, we didn't have much time. To be quite honest, I don't know too much um, about its history. So I, I'd love to learn and maybe I'll make more videos in the, in the future now that I've seen these uh, artifacts. But yeah, we kind of discovered it together and I hope you had fun. 
I hope you see some beautiful architecture and paintings and uh, I sure I sure enjoyed it so if you are in Copenhagen and you have a few hours maybe to spare between the flights definitely definitely a place to stop by